So good evening again, everyone, and welcome to Wisdom Wednesday in the My Eden Plan community. My name is Yawa Hansen Kwao. It's such a pleasure to have you all with us tonight, as we do every week when we get together. Our focus as a community is to keep us centered on our faith in Christ and to leverage that faith in Christ to win in every aspect of our lives. I hope you've enjoyed the series we've been doing over the past few weeks on winning at work and preparing ourselves for prominence. Today, we just want to switch things up a little bit by just spending today in worship and in prayer. You know, I don't know about you, but I I love it when people pray for me. So I just, you know, with the support of the leadership team, um, you wanted to lead us at, as a community in worship and in prayer today. And uh, so I just want to thank each of you for showing up tonight. And you can use the chat box function. If you have a specific prayer need, we would be happy to join faith with you as a community and just believe God with you for whatever it is you might be experiencing right now. You know, the Bible says that men ought always to pray and not faint. I don't know if any of my co-hosts can put that scripture reference in the chat box so you know that it's actually from the Bible. The scripture says that we should always pray and not get tired of praying. And I know that when I was a young Christian, I thought that prayer was very laborious and it was such a pain. But I want to encourage you today to think about prayer just as talking to God, right? It doesn't have to be super mysterious or super weird. Praying is really just talking to God. And the scriptures tell us that we ought to always be talking to God. We ought always not get sick and tired of speaking to our Lord. And so that's what we want to do today. Throughout today's um, time that we have together, we just want to talk to the Lord. And I want to lift us up right now, first and foremost, in a time of thanksgiving, Wherever you are, I just want to encourage you to thank the Lord for his goodness. You know, the Bible says the Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to speak and declare the truth of your word, which says that you are good and your mercies endure forever. We declare that you are good, Lord, and your mercies endure forever. We thank you that you are good and your mercies endure forever. Your word says that your mercies are renewed to us every day, and great is your faithfulness. We thank you for your great faithfulness, O God. We adore you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you that you don't even reward us according to our deeds, that even though we are flawed, even though we have weaknesses, even though we have mistakes, even though we don't always do the things that we should, you still love us. What manner of love you have loved us with, O God, that we are called your children and you are our father. We love you, Lord. We just want to declare our love for you tonight. We just want to declare that you are worthy and that there is none like you. Among all the gods, there is no God like you. You see, every other world religion requires that we sacrifice for the object of our worship. But Lord, you proved your love for us in that you sacrificed so that you could be in relationship with us. So Lord, we just want to love on you tonight. We adore you, Lord, and we thank you. We thank you that you have made your home in us, Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you that you are Elohim, Elohim Adonai. We thank you that you are El Shaddai. We praise you as the mighty rock of ages. We thank you that you are the rock of ages that was cleft for us. We adore you, Lord, because you are the good shepherd who gives his life for his sheep. We thank you that you are the Prince of Peace. You're the one who speaks peace to everything that is brewing as a storm in our lives. We thank you that when we move to the right or to the left, we are protected because you are our shield and our fortress. We adore you, Lord. We declare that you are worthy. You are worthy. 
You are worthy to receive all of our praise. You are worthy to receive all of our adoration. You are worthy of all of our love. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence at work within us. We thank you, Spirit of the living God, for flowing through us and speaking to us and guiding us and sustaining us and guide, guarding our hearts and our minds, Lord. We live in a wicked world and we are bombarded on every side with so much temptation, so many things that are striving for our attention but somehow we have been kept by your grace and by your mercy. We adore you, Lord, and we thank you. We thank you for favoring us. We thank you that your favor surrounds us like a shield. We thank you that we are favored. Everywhere we go, we are favored. We speak your favor over everyone connected to us, over everyone in our families, in this community, and, and beyond. And we pray that in the name of Jesus, Lord, you will help us to, to align ourselves and, and to submit ourselves and to yield ourselves fully to your Lordship in Jesus' name. We just want to thank the Lord wherever you are. I hope that you are not just watching and spectating. I pray that you are praying as well, that you're lifting up prayer wherever you are, because the word of God says that we ought always to pray and not get tired of praying. And that means we should always be talking to God. We should always never get tired of talking to God. Now I want us to talk to God about our failures. I want us to just confess and repent. Whatever we've done wrong, whatever we instructions that we've not obeyed, whatever of his commandments that we've not obeyed, we just want to confess our sins. You know, the scriptures say that if we make confession, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to lift up prayer for each and every one of us, Lord. But you know our hearts, you know our innermost beings, you know the parts of our lives that are hidden from others, but are crooked and are not walking in alignment with your purpose. So in the name of Jesus right now, we want to lift up our lives to you, oh God. Our hearts are like an open book before you, Lord, and we know that you see us and you understand all of our frailties. You you wove, you wove, You weaved our innermost beings, and, and we know that you know us more than we know ourselves. So Father, in any way I have violated your law, any way I've not lived up to your counsel, any acts of disobedience, every act of rebellion, we ask for mercy, Lord, that, Father, you would have mercy on us as we come to you today in prayer and supplication, that, Father, any area of our lives where we are walking in misalignment, every area of our lives that we've not given you the place of preeminence, Lord, every place in our lives that Jesus Christ isn't Lord, we just want to surrender to you right now. We ask that you would cleanse us of all unrighteousness, Lord that you will cleanse our hearts, our minds, our spirits, our souls, and we will come into your presence right now with purity of spirit, with clean hands. Your word says, who can ascend into the mountain of the Lord? It's only those with pure hearts and clean hands. So Father, pur purify our hearts and cleanse our hands, O oh Lord, that as we wage warfare tonight, as we lift up prayer, and intercession for each other, that your spirit will not be grieved by the posture in which we pursue you tonight in Jesus name. Spirit of the living God, we surrender ourselves to you. We pray that you will seal us and guide us and protect us and establish us in your will and your way. Your word says that we need to be steadfast. We need to be immovable in you. And some of us have not been steadfast and we've been moved because we've bowed to the pressures of life. And we just want to ask for mercy, Lord. We call upon the blood, the shed blood of Jesus that speaks better things. We pray that that blood, that problem-solving blood of Jesus will speak better things over our families, speak better things into our bodies, speak better things into our careers. Let the problem-solving blood of Jesus speak better things over every aspect of our lives in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask that you would arise and let every enemy be scattered. O oh, Spirit of the living God, arise and let every enemy be scattered. Anything that is 
in animosity to your will, your way, your purpose in our lives. Let those enemies be scattered in Jesus' name. Father, we let go of relationships, Lord, that are pulling us back into sin or into disobedience. We let go of every mindset, Lord. Your word says that we must take captive every thought and bring it into subjection to the knowledge of Christ Jesus. So Father, anything that we think, anything that we do, anything that we say that does not bring you glory, we submit it at your feet tonight in Jesus' name. We ask for mercy, O Lord, over everyone connected to us right now, everyone who's lifting up holy hands in prayer to you right now, that Holy Spirit, you will cleanse us. You will bring us into a right posture, that you would convict us of sin, even those that we've neglected to to confess, that you would bring us into remembrance of them so that we can come to you with a clean heart, with clean hands, with a right spirit. As the psalmist says, renew in me a right spirit. He says, says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew in me a right spirit. Lord, today that is our prayer. Just as the psalmist prayed, we are praying that you would create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us so that, Lord, we will not be walking in this world as how unbelievers walk, but we will walk in your divine counsel and your divine purposes for our lives in the name of Jesus. We ask, O Spirit of the living God, that you would take over this entire meeting, that this meeting will glorify you. We've not come into any person. We've come to you, O God, and we pray that in Jesus' name, your name would be magnified today. Father, Lord, we thank you. We lift you up. We establish you as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We we magnify you. Oh, be lifted up. Be lifted up, O ye gates, and, and be moved, you everlasting doors, so that the King of glory can enter in. Father, anything that stands as a gate or an everlasting door in our lives, we command them to bow so that the King of glory, the Lord Almighty, the Lord mighty in battle, the Lord Sabaoth, who your mightiness would enter in, enter into our marriages, enter into our homes, enter into our spirits, enter into our careers. Spirit of the living God, enter in. Let everything that seemed like an obstruction be removed. Let us have victory over everything that was once a ceiling over our heads. Let it become the floor under our feet in Jesus' name. Your word says that you are a God who takes the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Anyone listening to me now that is in a space where they feel underestimated, overlooked, unacknowledged, I pray that, Lord, you will lift them up. For thou, O Lord, are a shield for us. That's what your word says. Your word says that you are a shield for us. You are our glory. You are the lifter of our heads. So in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would lift the heads of every member of this community, everyone connected on this call today, everyone connected to us by blood, that, Father, you would arise over us and cause every thing that we are facing cause us to have victory over every battle we are waging in the name of Jesus. We thank you for victory, Lord, and we establish these victories in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you that you are God. We thank you that besides you, there is no other. We thank you for the truth of your word in Psalm 34. You know, the scriptures say in Psalm 34 that those that look to him are radiant. So let's just begin to declare radiance over our lives in Jesus' name. Lord, Father, we thank you that those that look to you are radiant. This is what your word teaches us in Psalm 34. So we declare over everyone connected to us today that we are radiant. We will shine like light in whatever corner of the world we find ourselves. We declare that we shall be radiant. We shall be radiant in Jesus' name. We declare that we shall be radiant. We declare that the world will see us radiate the glory and the splendor of Christ 
Jesus. We thank you that just as Christ Jesus was transfigured on the Mount of Transfiguration, that no one could look at him because he shined so bright. So shall we shine brightly in this world because your word says that as you are in the heavens, so are we here in this world. So Father, in Jesus' name, we ask that you would crown us with radiance. Let us radiate in our offices, in our homes. Let us radiate in every aspect of our lives, Lord. Let us radiate in every aspect of our lives. Let us radiate. Your word says that those that look to you are radiant. So Father, we receive the anointing of radiance. People will say, who are these people? Where have they come from? Because just as you were transfigured and as beauty was seen on you that no one had seen before, so shall we radiate like light in our careers, in our homes, in our offices, in our communities, and in our nations in Jesus' name. Father, we establish your word in Psalm 34, and we declare that the gift and the power to radiate the light of God is our portion in Jesus' name. We pray that those of us who are going through seasons that look dark and hopeless, that Father, you will cause us to tap into the streams of living water that lie within us. Your word says that those that believe on your name, out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living waters. So Father, let those rivers flow in Jesus' name. Everyone whose light has been dimmed, everyone who feels like they're in a corner, they're stuck. Your word says that you lift us out of the miry clay and you set our feet upon the rock and that rock is Jesus. So Father, we speak over everyone going through a season of dryness, a be a, a, a season where they feel stuck in the clay. We pray that you would not just remove them from there, that you wouldn't just set them on the rock, but that you will cause them to radiate in Jesus's name. The scriptures say that the stone that the builders once rejected has now become the cornerstone. So we prophesy that over everyone who's going through this season where they feel like their best is not good enough. They feel invisible. They feel like they are in oblivion. Nobody cares. Nobody sees all of the work that they've done in secret. Father, in the name of Jesus, let them be rewarded openly. Father, that reward of faithfulness, that reward of diligence, that reward of doing the, the right thing when nobody is watching. I pray that those that are getting discouraged, those that are feeling under valued and underappreciated, that Father, by these words, hope will come alive again in Jesus' name. Father, we call upon the power that is in the shed blood of Jesus. And we speak victory over each and every one who is struggling in their careers. Lord, you've told us that you were preparing us for prominence. And some people are between what feels like a rock and a hard place. And we pray that in the name of Jesus, you will in open the eyes of our understanding, that you will illuminate to each and every one of us the decisions that need to be made in order to move to the next level in Jesus' name. We pray that you will bring into our reality the relationships, the connections, the people at the right time that will move and propel us to the level of your will. We pray that, Lord, any bad habit, any misbehaviors, anything that is in our um character and attitude that would keep us from moving into our next level, that spirit of the living God, you would prune us. Prune us, O oh God. Those of us who need the pruning, it is never, never pleasant in the current moment that it's happening, but it is for our own good. For your word teaches us in the New Testament that every branch that bears fruit, you prune so that it can bear more fruit. So Father, help us to yield to the process of pruning, to yield to the process of yielding and molding us into the image so that we can all come into the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ in Jesus' name. That's what your word says, that all of us should come into the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. Let that be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 
Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness and mercy towards us. We thank you that you are alive and well. We thank you that you are risen from the grave. And because you live, we can face tomorrow. We thank you, Lord, that there is no needless pain that we will bear. There's no issue that we would allow to fester in our lives because we trust in you. Father, we declare our hope is in you, Lord. Our trust is in you, Lord. Everything we need is in you, Lord. We know that we have help in nobody else but you, Lord. So Holy Spirit, take the reins of our lives, O oh God. We declare that you are awesome and there is none like you. We declare that we are blessed. We are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And your word says that if any man sin, if any of us sin, we have an advocate with you, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And we thank you that Jesus is interceding on our behalf daily. So Father, we pray against guilt. Many of us are being buffeted on every side by the accuser of the brethren, making us feel guilty over things that we've done in the past, choices that we've made that didn't work out, things that we did that weren't in, in line with where we needed to be. But your word says that there is hope. There is hope for the future, says the Lord. So we thank you for the hope that we have found in you. And your word says that you cause all things to work together for our good. So in the name of Jesus, we declare over ourselves today that all things are working together for our good. I speak it over our, 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 our community today, Lord, that all things are working together for our good. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for a spirit of restoration coming to us today. We thank you for restoration. We speak restoration over everyone in this community today. Father, restore the hope that has been dashed from constant cycles of disappointment. Restore the energy that has been dissipated through constant cycles of sickness and disease. Restore, restore the love that has been lost from our love relationships. Restore the fervor and the urgency and the desire of first love in our marriages, restore, Lord, in the name of Jesus, restore, restore mental faculties to a place of mental soundness. Your word says that you've not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, of power and a sound mind. So in the name of Jesus, we speak restoration to our minds. We command our minds to be still and to see the power of God at work in our mental faculties. We speak against uh, depression and anxiety. We command them out of our lives and out of our community and out of our homes in Jesus' name. We establish the covenant that of peace and sound mind in Jesus' name. Father, we shall be stable. We declare stability. We declare stability, stability in our thinking faculties, stability in our, in our breathing. Those who are suffering under the weight of panic attacks, we curse those attacks in Jesus' name. We command them to leave your, your, your realm of reality in Jesus' name. We establish the lordship of God and we speak the Zoe life of God into everyone experiencing panic attacks and anxiety disorders and mental instability in Jesus' name. Lord, we establish the lordship of Jesus over our homes. We establish you as the king of our homes, O God. We pray for our children. We declare healing and wholeness over all of our children, over our spouses, over our extended families. Father, those that have aging parents, and are concerned about their care and their wellness. We pray for health and stability, Lord, that, Father, you will usher us into seasons of peace as we enter into prominence so that we will not be distracted. We will not ha have a split focus so that we will be able to walk into the doors that you are opening for us in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory and all the praise because you are leading us in ways that we can't even articulate. We know 
that you are the one who shepherds us. Your word teaches us in Psalm 23 that you are our shepherd. And because you are our shepherd, we declare by faith that we shall never be in want. We declare by faith that we shall never be in want. We thank you that in Jesus' name, we shall never be in want. We thank you that we are provided for. All of our needs are met. We are safe and it is well with us because you are our shepherd. We thank you that even though we might be walking through valleys that feel like death, we fear no one. We fear nothing because you are with us, oh God. We thank you because you have anointed our heads with so much oil that our cups are running over. We thank you, Lord, that goodness and mercy are following us. We thank you that you are even preparing a table before us in the presence of people that don't even like us. We thank you that we are greatly helped in Jesus' name. We are greatly helped. We are shielded. We are provided for everything we need we have in Jesus' name. We declare by faith in your word that we have everything that we need for life and for godliness. We establish that in our lives in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that everywhere we go, we are helped. We speak to the four corners of this earth, to the east, to the north, to the south, to the west. We speak to all of the corners that a whirlwind of God's blessing is locating us in Jesus' name. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for breathing a fresh wind and a fresh fire over us. We thank you that you've done a great thing and a great work in our lives. We thank you that we are helped. Wherever we are, we are helped in Jesus' name. We thank you that the help of God, we are reinforced by the army of heaven. We are reinforced by the heavenly armies in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are reinforced by heavenly armies. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that we are reinforced, that those of us who are shackled by fear, in bondage, enslaved to fear, we rebuke the spirit of fear and we repent. First and foremost, we repent of taking counsel from the spirit of fear. We repent of any and all agreements that we have made with the spirit of fear. We renounce those agreements in Jesus' name. We know nullify the effect of every ill-spoken word that we've spoken against our destiny, against our future. And in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would wash us you would do what your word says in Colossians, that you blotted out every evil ordinance that was against us, and especially those ordinances that came were pronounced by our own mouths. So Father, in Jesus' name, nullify the effect of every ill-spoken word that we spoke out of anger or frustration or disappointment or resentment. Every word that we spoke out of fear, uh, I can't do it. I don't know what to do. I'm confused. We nullify the effect of those words. We declare by faith that we know exactly what to do. We have the anointing that was upon the sons of Issachar. They had anointing to know exactly what to do and when to do it. The scriptures say that they had an understanding of the times and seasons and knew exactly what to do. So Father, we receive that grace. We receive that anointing. We renounce confusion. We renounce uh, doubt and 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 instability we renounce the inability to come to decisions. We renounce all of that. That decision paralysis, we renounce it in Jesus' name. We declare that we are walking in boldness and in power. We are the anointed of you, O oh God. We are your children. You are our God. So we cannot and will not be lost in Jesus' name. Your word says that when we move to the right or to the left, we will hear a voice saying, this is the way walk in it. So Holy Spirit, open our ears and open our spirits and open our eyes so that we can receive your counsel. Will Help us not to be distracted by the things of this world. Help us not to be carried away by what other people are doing. Help us, O Spirit of the living God, in the name of Jesus. Help us. Help us to hear you when you speak and to act upon what you say. Help us to not dilly-dally and doubt and, and procrastinate anymore, but help us to move. When you say move, give us the boldness to go at your word. Father, we thank you that even though we are frail, 
even though we don't always do what we say we would, even though we don't always come into alignment, you still love us. You even demonstrated that love for us in that while we were yet sinners, that you, oh Lord Jesus, you died for us even while we were yet sinners. Oh, what an amazing love, oh God. We thank you for this amazing love. Your word even says that where sin abounds, grace abounds even more. So we just want to thank you, Lord, for your extravagant grace. This is grace like we've never seen before. This is extravagant, limitless grace. And we just want to adore you for this grace, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness. Sister, and brothers, I don't know if you're praying, but I am in the zone here and I want to encourage you to pray wherever you are and ask the Lord to, to just illuminate however you need to pray in this moment. If you need to speak in the language of the spirit, please do that. And whatever it is right now, just begin to pour out your heart in prayer. You know, when we get together like this, we believe there's power. The Bible says where there are two or three gathered in his name, he's there. So we believe God is here and we be believe that the spirit of God is available to move. If you have a specific prayer request and you would like for us to join faith with you over that request, you can use the chat box to type in your prayer request and I'd be happy to lead prayers on your specific issues. Um, if you just need someone to join faith and uh, with you right now, I'd be honored to do that. You know, one of the reasons why I'm passionate about us praying is that I realize that, look, I know a lot of people that have a lot of money, but no success. I know a lot of people that are way smarter than I am, but no success. Because I believe that there is a grace that only God can give to propel you where you need to be at the right time. So that's why when the scripture says that we ought to always pray and not faint, I believe it. So I just want to encourage you. This is not a performance. This is us crying out to our Lord and asking for mercy and asking for him to hear us. And we want to intercede on the behalf of others because, you know, the scriptures say two are better than one because if one falls, then the other can lift them. And so sometimes when I'm feeling weak, I just need someone to agree with me. And the scriptures teach us that when two people agree as touching anything, the Lord hears and he does it. So that's why we really believe in intercession as well. If you have a prayer topic, we're going to go to the chat box very soon, but I really want us to lift up prayers for our nation. You know, whatever nation you're in right now, I know in this community, we've got people from all over Africa, all over Europe, all over, you know, the Americas. This is quite the international community. So wherever you are, I want you to lift up prayer for your nation. You know, the scriptures teach us to uh, pray for the peace of the city that we live in, because it's in the peace of that city that you will also have peace. So there's a scriptural mandate that each of us has has to pray for wherever it is we live. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to lift up our nations before you. Your word says that righteousness exalts a nation. So we pray that in the name of Jesus, our nations will be exalted through righteousness. We pray that we as believers will be exemplars of righteous living, and we pray that your spirit will rule and reign wherever we are. You know, we believe what your word says is true, that we are your ambassadors here on earth. So we pray that in Jesus' name, you will help us to live up to the title of ambassadorship, that Lord, we will intercede for the right policies, the right things to happen, the right people to be in power, the right ordinances and laws to be written, the right procedures, the right processes, so that there will be health and wholeness and, and prosperity in the nations in which we live. Many of our nations this year are going to the polls to elect new leadership. Ghana, where I live, is one of those nations. So if your nation is going to, to, to have a general election this year, we just want to lift up special prayer for your nation. We pray that all of our nations that are going into general election cycles this year, that in the name of Jesus, you will arise, O God, and let righteousness be established, that, Father, you will handpick the leaders, and that you will bring the transformations in our various nations that are needed. Father, you delight in the prosperity of your people, so we pray that you will come and rule and reign over our hearts, our minds, and our votes, so that, Lord, we will 
enact your will. We will choose leaders that reflect your will for our nations in Jesus' name. We pray for peace and stability. We pray that, Lord, you will deliver us from the, the snare of the failure. And, you know, the snare is simply a trap. So every trap that the enemy is conspiring Firing to lay at the feet of our nations, Lord. Father, help us to escape them. Father, we know that there is just so much evil in the world and so many wars and rumors of wars. And we know that these are signs of the end of time. But we pray that, Lord, you will help us to be people of courage, to do your will in spite of whether it's popular or not. We pray that you will help us to 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 let our voices be be heard when it comes to governance. Your word says that governance would rest on the shoulders of Christ. So we pray that the governance of our nations will rest upon the shoulders of your word, that your word will be a lamp unto the nations we live and a guide unto our path so that, Lord, everything you are wanting to do in us and through us will become accomplished in Jesus' name, amen and amen. I hope you're praying um, and I hope you're you're really following us today because, you know, there's just such a blessing that happens when we're in agreement and in prayer together. I'm going to come to the chat box right now and see if there are any specific prayer topics. Um, thank you, Sister Na, for putting in the uh, scripture reference, Luke 18, verse 1, men ought always to pray and not lose heart. Um, other translations say men ought always to pray and not faint. So don't lose heart in praying. You know, I know what it's like to pray and pray, and then you feel like God's not listening to you. You know, sometimes God works on what you're asking for, and sometimes God works on you, but prayer always works. So I want to encourage you to not grow faint in praying. Uh, we have a prayer request here for success in these professional exams on the 26th. Okay, thank you so much, sister, for sharing that. Um, there's another prayer request. Um, there are encroachers on my land and they're um, conducting some fraudulent activities. So we'll pray for that as well. Um, another prayer request here to be able to put God first and to know and grow in him and prayer for wisdom and favor and direction to be able to, to have her and her team meet all of their end of year targets. These are powerful prayer topics. Can we pray together, everyone, you know, wherever you are, just lift up prayer as I lead us. Um, you know, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just really wanna thank you for these prayer requests that have come through. We believe that you're the prayer answering God, you know, just like Elijah when he stood in front of the entire nation and was challenging the prophets of Baal. He said, let the God that answers by fire be God. So I declare that by faith right now, that dear God who answers by fire be God in these three situations. I lift up the HR professional exam that our sister is going to be writing very soon. We pray that in the name of Jesus, you will give her victory over this examinations, that Lord, you will let her have retentive memory. You'll give her the ability to study what is relevant, the ability to be confident and not swayed by whatever, um, you know, test and, and anxieties may stand in the way of her being focused. And we pray that your spirit of wisdom and excellence will rest upon her so that as she goes into that examination hall, as she writes this exam, you will crown her efforts with victory in Jesus's name. We pray also for our sister who has encroachers on her land. And we pray that, Lord, every work of the enemy in her affairs would be destroyed. The word of God says in the scriptures, and someone can put it in the chat box so that you know I'm not just making this up. The Bible says that for this one reason was the son of God made manifest, that he would destroy the works of the devil. So I just want to declare over you right now, let every work of the devil in your life be destroyed in Jesus' name. Every handiwork and every person whose hands are the conduits through which that work is done. We speak an end 
to your activities right now. We declare, let every work of the enemy in your life be destroyed in Jesus's name. We use you as a point of contact for anyone else in this community who is tussling over things that are rightfully theirs. You know, the book of Ecclesiastes, um, the, um, I, Solomon, I believe, writes that there's a great error that I've seen in this world, that People who are royalty are walking and people who are slaves are riding. Like there's an, a spiritual imbalance that sometimes happens that causes us to not inherit and to walk in the prosperity that comes with our rank. The scriptures teach us that we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, that we should show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness and into his glorious light. So we just want to affirm this word over you right now, that let every work of the devil in your life be destroyed in Jesus' name. For this one reason was the Son of God, Jesus Christ, made manifest, that he would destroy the works of the devil. So let every work of the devil in your life, in your business, in your affairs, in anything that touches you, even in your physical body. For those of you who are believing God for healing, I speak this word over you. Let every work of the devil in your body be destroyed in Jesus' name. We receive healing. We release the Zoe life of God into every cell of your body now. We establish the lordship of Jesus over you now. We declare that by God, you shall run through troops and you shall leap over walls. Those things that used to obstruct you and stop you, we declare that you're leaping over them now. We declare that in Jesus' name, anything that once stopped you in times past will stop you again no more in the name of Jesus. Now, boldly do the things that you were meant to do. Because sometimes the enemy just steals away the focus by bombarding and buffeting you. And sometimes all you need to do is move like those lepers who sat at the city gates. They said, let's just go. Let's go into the city and see whether or not we can get some help. And as they went, God amplified their steps and they sounded like a mighty army. And I speak that over each and every one of you that has been shackled by fear, that as you go, the spirit of God is backing you because you have sat in the same place for too long. And God is trying to get you to move because he can only bless what you put your hands to. So stop waiting Stop stopping. I think that's a word for somebody. Stop stopping because the spirit of God has given you liberty, but now he needs you to put your hands to the thing so he can bless it. And I pray that those of us that have gone through so much suffering, so much that it's made us unwilling to try, that the spirit of God will renew hope in you tonight, that you will stop stopping, that the spirit of God will release you into a new realm of trust, that you will invest in your well-being. You will invest in building capacity. You will dig another well. You know, Isaac dug a well and the enemy came, covered it up. He dug another well, the enemy came and dug it up, but he kept digging the wells. And that's the word to someone tonight, keep digging the well. And then finally, he got to one place, and that's when he made that prayer that many of us speak over ourselves. He said, Rehoboth, for now the Lord has made room for me, and I shall be fruitful in this land. I speak that over you today. For now, in this moment, in this season, in this time, at the sound of this prayer, the Lord has made room for you, and you shall be fruitful in this land, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we want to join faith with our sister who's believing you for stability in her relationship with you. We pray that, Lord, you will help her to come into the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ, that, Father, her love for you will grow deep and wide, that her desire to get into the word will go deep and wide, that she will hunger just as the deer pants for the waters, so may her soul long after you. I pray that you'll give her 
an unquenchable desire to know you, to be led by you, to let all of her affairs be governed by you. We pray for a deep hunger to even come into this community. Those of us that have gone a little lukewarm and cold, we pray for a revival in Jesus' name. We pray that, Lord, you would revive us in every way our love for you has gone cold, we pray that you would revive us, that you would restore us, restore us to this place of, you know, extravagantly reckless love, that we would love you. We would be unashamed to be called by your name. We would invite you into every moment of every day, and we would take our counsel from you. We wouldn't move unless we know you are with us, Lord. We cannot be hidden from you. You see us in our innermost. So, Lord, this prayer of hunger for you, may you answer. Your word says that wisdom goes knocking, goes through the city gates. Come, those of you that are simple, come. She's asking you for wisdom, Lord. And your word says that wisdom just is going around the world looking for people to invite her in. So Father, let that spirit of wisdom come upon her. Your word teaches us in the New Testament as well, that those, if anyone lacks wisdom, let them ask the Lord who gives, he doesn't give sparingly. He doesn't sprinkle. He doesn't do salt bay on you. He gives lavishly. So as you have asked for wisdom, may the Lord give you lavishly that wisdom, that wisdom that is beyond your years, that wisdom that enables you to not even know how you know what you know, but you just know, you know, and I pray, um, and someone can put it in the chat in case I'm misquoting it. Um, I pray first John 2.29 29 over you. You know, the, that scripture, I believe, says that you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you need not that any man teach you, because the Spirit teaches you all things, even the deep things of God. And I pray that that will be your lived reality, that you will know the deep things of God. You will know you will know, you will have an inner knowing what God has called you to. You will have a sharpness, a discernment, an ability that is beyond human teachers. And just as David said, he, I believe it was David who says, Lord, you've made me wiser than my teachers. Let that be said of you in Jesus's name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I see a few more prayer topics. Hallelujah. All right, prayers for provision for my family as the school year opens. Hey, Charlie, yesterday I paid school fees. Huh? And then when I looked at my bank balance, I said, when men are fallen, I shall declare that there is a lifting. So I took a hit and I know what it's like. School is back in session. You've got to pay the school fees. You've got to get the things. You've got to do it all. And I just want to join faith for every family represented here in Jesus name that the Lord will show you financial mercy. You know, the Lord, this is a prayer I've been praying all year, and I see God just showing up in the most diverse ways. I pray that God will show you financial mercy. I pray that God will help you to understand the, the, the spiritual principle of sowing and reaping. And I pray that God will help you put your hands to things that prosper. Listen to the voice of God for divine ideas and, and wisdom for, for how to put things together to create wealth. And I believe that God is is really trying to bring wealth into the hands of his people. We are part of the end times where, and we need a harvest of finances to finance the kingdom, not just finance our homes. So I want to pray for more than just provision for your school fees right now. I pray that God will make you a kingdom financier, that Lord, when you start praying that Lord, use me to fund your kingdom, God will find ways and means to bless you. And of course, as he blesses you, the blessings pass through your home. So your children will be fine. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We activate the truth that is in Matthew chapter chapter 6, verse 33, I believe, which says that when you seek first the kingdom of God, every other thing will be added. Now, Father, we believe that that word is true. And in the name of Jesus, we affirm that word over everyone that is believing you for financial resources. So, Father, we will by faith put you first, and we believe by faith that every other thing will be added, because your spirit will whisper to us to know what to do, to know where to go, to know how to put things together to create wealth. And 
we activate the wisdom that comes from you. Your word says that um, you, you teach us how to get wealth so that you can keep the covenant that you already made to us. So Lord, we just we have a good deal with you. So we are coming to you now under the covenant that you spoke before we were born. We have come into a holy covenant with you and we believe that all of our needs are met. So we declare it so in Jesus' name. And we pray that Lord, um, you would show us financial mercy, even if we've been foolish, even if we've squandered the money, even if we've made breathtakingly bad decisions show us mercy for the sake of the children we need to look after for the sake of your kingdom we need to support show this community financial mercy in Jesus's mighty name amen and amen um hallelujah all right prayer for divine healing all right grace Okay, there are some names here of staff members that are unwell. Uh, so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Grace and Sherry and Lizzie. We pray for divine healing over them in Jesus' name. Your word says that you were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement that gives us peace was upon you, and by your stripes we were healed. So, Father, we affirm the finished works of Jesus Christ over Grace and Sherry and Lizzie. We pray that that blood of Jesus, that that rose Christ from the dead will raise their bodies out of the bed of affliction. We pray that every Ill, illness and ailment um, that is arresting them right now, that you would break them out of the shackles of those illnesses in Jesus' name. We pray for vigor. And in fact, we speak over every cell of their body. Receive the Zoe life of God now and be made whole in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Um, hallelujah. I see prayer for God's direction. Uh, pray for marriage. My husband wants to divorce. Um, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that you are able. You know, there is hope for the future. And we thank you that even in this situation, you are God. Your word says that, well, there's a song that says, even in the grave, he is Lord. And I just want to encourage you, you're going through this divorce, what seems like an impending end of a relationship that you thought would end, um, you know, in death, right? And until death do us part is what you declared at your wedding. And we want to reactivate that word. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, your word teaches us that you hate divorce. And I see from this request that there's a desire for restoration. So, Father, we activate those words spoken in covenant when this marriage was being put together. And what you put together, we refuse any man to put asunder. So, in the name of Jesus, help your daughter and your son, that father, whatever it takes to help them find their way back to each other, that you alone know and you alone can perform. Now, between now and when that happens, I pray for grace for your daughter, that Lord, she will not be led astray by what she sees. She will not judge things by what she sees or what she hears or what she feels, but she will rest in the finished works of Jesus. And she will continue to declare that what God has put together, no man shall put asunder, including the man in the relationship. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for a boldness to come upon her, to stand in faith for restoration. And we pray that you would bring her into a place of repentance over anything that she might have said or done that is cause, that is causing some of the friction. And we pray that as she's come to you looking for mercy, that you will shield her and this relationship by your mercy in Jesus' name. We pray that by your mercy, you will rescue and you will save this marriage marriage relationship. And if there are children, may you shield them in this moment that Lord, what the enemy means for evil, turn it around for your good in Jesus's name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. 
birthday in a few days, praying for a record-breaking year. I love that. Record-breaking year. I love it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I join my faith that, Lord, this year's birthday will be, as she has declared, a record-breaking year. Give her joy on every side. Give her peace on every side. Give her more than what she thinks and asks or imagines, because that's what your scriptures say. You know, for those who can put that in the in the chat box, there's a sc scripture that says that God does exceedingly and abundantly more than anything that you can ask, think, or imagine. So I pray that your records, you, you may be looking at it at this level, may God do above exceedingly <laughs> abundantly more than any record you're, you're trying to set for yourself in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Happy birthday in advance, dear sister. Hallelujah. All right. I need prayer for my son. Everything seems stagnant around him. He needs Jesus, a straight A student who appears to have lost interest in most things. He needs a sound mind. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, there is nothing that you cannot do. Hallelujah. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot move. And if you have said it, surely you will do it. That's actually the lyrics to the song that I love. Because you have a track record of keeping your word. And you're not about to stop doing it now. So, my dear sister, we lift up your son to the Lord, who has a track record of keeping his word. The Bible says that great shall be their peace. Our children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be their peace. We speak that over your son, that even though he looks prodigal now, even though he looks aimless now, we speak the word of God over him. Our children are taught of the Lord and great shall be their peace. So we speak that over your son. We declare that he is taught of the Lord, and great shall be his peace. We declare that he is surrounded in love, that, Father, the love of God, there's no depth it cannot go to, even if he is lost. That's what the psalmist discovered. He said that even if I make my bed in Sheol, which is like old language for hell, he says, even if I make my bed there, even there you will find me. That is how we cannot escape the love of God. Paul, the apostle Paul, caught a revelation of that love. In the New Testament, he said, where can we go to hide from your love? He says that his love, you know, we, we don't know the edges of it. We don't know the borders of it. So nothing. And he got so convinced that he wrote in scripture that nothing can separate us from the love of God that is found in Christ Jesus. So death, Will death? No. Will famine? No. Will scarcity? No. He, he lists, and someone can put that in the chat box because I didn't come with all my scriptural references today, but it's in there. And he says, we cannot be separated. So just speak that over your son. He cannot be separated from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. He cannot be lost in the name of Jesus. Do not walk by sight, walk by faith. Begin to speak over him daily. Now, Father, we join faith with this mother crying to you for the life of her son. And we speak restoration over him, but we affirm your word and we declare that he is taught of you and great shall be his peace. He shall not be a vagabond. He shall not be lost. He will proclaim you, Lord. He will know you, Lord. He shall not be lost in Jesus' name. He shall not be separated from the love of God. Even if that love doesn't come from me as his mother, he will not be lost. The love of God will not be lost. If he can't listen to my voice as his mother, you will raise up other mothers. Did you not see that Deborah, she said, life in Israel had ceased until I, Deborah, rose up as a mother? That even if if your motherhood cannot reach your son, God can raise other mothers for him. So Father, in Jesus' name, we join faith, declaring that her son will not be lost. We declare that he will be loved. Your love will find him, even if he makes his bed in hell. Your word has assured us that your love can find him. So Father, we surrender him to you, and we surrender her heart to you, that she will not speak out of frustration and, and, and create snares for him, you know, 
So we nullify the effect of every word that she's spoken over her son just out of frustration. Anything that she has said that has become a trap the enemy has used to open and enter into him, we pray that you will seal those doors. So I, I want to encourage you to just think and repent on anything that you've said out of frustration or anger or or just you know anxiety about where he is in life. But surrender him to the Lord and know that he can't escape the love of God. So love him, even if you have to love him from a distance, love him from the safe distance and believe that God can raise up other mothers, other voices. You know, even in the pigsty, the prodigal son could hear a voice. I believe that that was the love and mercy of God speaking, speaking as he's looking at this nasty pig food. He's like, I, I will arise and go to my father and I will say that I have sinned against you. Don't even take me as a son now. Take me as a hired hand. There is a point that everyone comes to where the realization hits. Now let's just surrender him to God. Let the Holy Spirit do the convicting. No amount of your nagging, no amount of your comparison, no amount of your hmm and heaving and hoeing will change him. Surrender him to the Lord and let's see what the Lord can do. Amen. All right. Okay. Thank you for posting the additional scripture references. God bless you all for praying with us today. Thank you so much for praying with us today. I see lots of thank yous and amens and lots of prayers. Um, someone's believing God for open doors. Yes. You know, and, and that's one of the reasons I wanted us to pray today. God has been leading us to prepare for prominence. And now he's opened certain doors that some of us are struggling to walk through. So that's how we will end today. We'll just pray that God will usher us through the doors in Jesus's name. Hallelujah. Someone is saying that her employer has asked for an independent health assessment um, of her for this Friday. So she prays that everything will work together for her good. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we join faith with you that as your daughter goes for this independent health assessment, that there will be nothing missing and nothing broken in Jesus' name. Let there be nothing missing and nothing broken in Jesus' name. I pray that she will go and come back with joy in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow. Thank you for putting that in the chat box. Um, thank you for these scriptures so that I didn't, I, I want you to make sure we're not misquoting and misrepresenting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Doesn't this make you happy? I could just break out in a song and a dance right now. This is the word of God. It constantly refreshes our souls. And we just want to thank you, Lord, for your word. I see lots of amens, lots of thank you so much for joining us to pray tonight. I see we're at time, so I want to wrap it up by praying that God will help us to walk through the doors that he's opening. You know, some of us, doors have been open for us, but we're shackled with fear and we don't want to walk through them. We've been praying and believing God, but we've been so disappointed in the past that we just don't want to or don't feel like we can walk through the doors. So if that is you right now, I just really want to join faith with you that the Lord God Almighty will give you the boldness and the courage to walk through the doors that he has opened. You know, someone said something yesterday that I loved and I said it to, to my mother came to visit me today and I said it to her and I'm going to say it to you because I think it's relevant. God is spelled G-O-D. Two out of those three letters spell the word go. And sometimes we feel like we're waiting and waiting, but God is just saying, go, 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 go. So I pray that if there's any area of your life that you think you're waiting, but God is asking you to go, that you would just go, 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 and go. Some of us aren't going because we're afraid of making mistakes. Some of us aren't going because we feel like, oh, they will say this and they will say that. Some of us aren't going because we're, we, we just feel demoralized by what our past failures are speaking to us. So Father, in the name of Jesus, 
Jesus, we silence the voice of past failure, past disappointments, past ridicule, past embarrassment that has made us unwilling to go through the doors that you have so graciously opened. We seal those doors in Jesus' name and we declare that we are strengthened now. We declare that by you, we are running through every troop. By you, we are leaping over every wall. By you, we are taking every territory. By you, we are becoming everything you've called us to be. By you, Lord, we're not going in our own strength. We're going in yours. So we pray that everyone at the sound of my voice right now will hear, not me, but you. Because Lord, you are trying to bring us into prominence. And until we move, we cannot see the miraculous. So spirit of the living God, help us to move. Help us to take the steps, even if they're painful. Help us to make the choices, even if they hurt. Help us to relinquish everything in the past and do what the Apostle Paul teaches. He said, this one thing I do, forgetting everything that lies behind me, I reach to do what God is calling me to do. And that's what the Lord is expecting of all of us. Forget the things that are behind you. Forget it and reach. May God help us to reach. May God help us to come into the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. And may we be seen as excellent in every way as we step into these doors that he's opening for us in Jesus's name. God bless you for praying with us tonight. God bless you for consistently showing up when we invite you to show up. You know, we are, as a community are going to be on a, a break for the next couple of weeks. We know that it's been a long summer and people, you know, have their kids back in school and it's affected people's ability to be consistent with our meetings. So we're going to be on a short pause for the next couple of weeks. Um, and, you know, please keep checking our notice boards to let you know when we're back. But it's been such a pleasure, you know, leading you over the past couple of weeks with our Prepare for Prominent series, our Win at Work series, and now ending it with this prayer meeting tonight. I pray that it's been a blessing to you, and I pray that you'll stay connected to the Lord uh, as we are going to be on this short pause um, from these regular uh, weekly meetings. But um, if you are in a place where you are able to unmute, I'd love to hear your voice so that we can share the grace together. Um, we would love to just share the grace together as a community and then call it wraps for the 